One of the reasons we make use of Excel is not only because it allows for the easy tabulation of data and the creation of spreadsheets, but also because it easily allows us to calculate figures. If we had a list of amenities that we wanted to total, as we can see in this example spreadsheet here, Excel allows us to do that quite easily. If we are making a if we're working out a total, we could hand write that formula that we need and it would merely be an addition formula. And if we are handwriting something, as we'll see in further videos, remember we always have to start with the equals symbol. And that tells Excel that we are starting a calculation. What we could do is merely write out the numbers that we're adding together. So it's 150 plus 90 plus 100 plus 65 plus 200 plus 120. And do be aware that you have to make use of the arithmetic operators that you need, the plus symbol in this case, because we're using the addition function. Once we've typed in that cell, as we've seen in previous videos, in order to confirm cell entry, all we have to do is press enter or mouse away from that cell. It's a good idea to get into the habit of pressing enter at the end of a formula, just so that you can make use of it or get used to it. So the total here is 725, but the whole point of using Excel is that if values change, or if um, numbers change, then totals formulas can update. If the cost of gas increased to 150, so if I just type in 150, then we know that the total should increase, but here in the total box in cell B8, it's not increased and that's because I've merely used figures in the formula and it's still reading 90. I could go into the formula bar and alter that number to make it correct. But if we had a spreadsheet that was huge or if we had multiple changes to make that would take lots of time. What we can use instead of the values within a cell is the cell reference itself. So again, I start with equals, and in this instance I could either type in B2, because I know that that's the first cell reference, and do be aware with Excel 2007 and 2010, as soon as you enter a letter into a cell after the equals symbol, it will give you a list of all of the available functions that start with that letter and we can just ignore this. So if I say B2 and it has highlighted cell B2. An easier way to work is if I just put in the plus symbol is to merely click over the cell that we're selecting. So in this instance it's B3 and then plus and B4 and plus and note that the boxes are color coded to some extent. We do get a lovely little rainbow appearing. Once we've typed in our new calculation, so it's B1, B2, B, B3, B2, B3, B4, B5, B6, and B7 all added together. And do beware, it matters. It doesn't matter if you've got a lowercase b or a highercase b or whatever letter that you're using for the cell. If I press enter and there is my total and the point of using cell references rather than values if the rent goes back down to 90 as soon as I confirm that entry into the cell, into cell B3 the total updates because it's not copying the numbers it's copying whatever is inside that cell there is a much simpler way of adding together numbers, 
within Excel and that's making use of the Auto Sum button found in the Editing group in the Home ribbon. Do please be aware that the Auto Sum button is a dual function button. We've got the initial button itself. So if I clicked on Auto Sum it says display the sum of the selected cells directly after the selected cell. We also have a drop down arrow that allows us to work out the sum, average, count numbers, max and min. We have a more functions option as well but at level 1, which is this video is for, we don't need to work about, worry about that. Though do please feel free to explore it if you want to. For now all we're going to do is click on Auto Sum and that immediately in cell B8, because that was the selected cell, it's typed in equals sum open brackets B2 colon B7 close brackets. And that B2 colon B7 means it's a range between B2 and B7. All I have to do then is press enter as soon as I've confirmed that those cells are correct and it gives me my total. If we go into another sheet now and again I want a total for each of these courses. If I click on the total, if I go into the total cell, cell F2 in this instance and then click auto sum oh. if I click on auto sum now it will immediately look to the left for cell references to add in to that sum and so the auto sum button will automatically look up first for any s values in a cell and if it can't find any it will look left. The auto sum function will never look down and it will never look right for information. And this can cause a problem looking up first. If I press enter to confirm that cell we get the total 28. And we've gone down into F3, the next row down. If I click auto sum again, it again looks to the left for all of those numbers. So if I press enter and again we get the total and we move down a row. If I press auto sum now, what it's adding up at the moment is the numbers or the values above that cell. So remember it always looks up first and if there are no values above it looks left. Obviously we don't want the total of column F, we want the total of columns B to E. So in this instance, if it's selected the wrong cells, we can position the mouse cursor in the first cell that we're selecting, press and hold the left mouse button and just drag the cursor to include all of the correct cells. Okay. If you find at any point that you've incorrectly selected a cell, as I click around these cells, it's adding those cell references into the sum. If it's gone horribly wrong, we can always press the escape key on the keyboard and that will take us out of the auto sum function. So again if I just click on auto sum, make my selection again and then press enter, there's our answer and 7 plus 4 plus 4 plus 6 is 17. Another way in which you can use auto sum is to make your selection before you click auto sum. So we saw selecting cells in a previous video. If I select all of these cells and the total of 12 and 15 should be 27. If I click on auto sum now it's put 27 into that cell, into that total column. You can also make sure that you've selected the empty cell in which you want the total to appear. And again, oh, my mouse keeps jumping. And if we click auto sum, again, it's immediately entered the answer. And 10 plus 13 is 23. So we have the answers to our auto sum button use. 
Something to be aware of, if we go into cell F2, and remember this is only for an example, we can see that 28 is in cell F2, but in the formula bar it will always show the actual contents. And in this instance it's equals sum open brackets B2 colon E2 close brackets. And as we go down this list we'll see that the row reference increases as we go down. If we wanted to work out the average number of learners for each of these age ranges, again we could make use of the auto sum button. But in this instance, instead of using the auto sum button itself, we're using the drop down arrow and we click on average. And that will work out the mean of all of the learners there. So it's equals average, and then again we get the cell reference and the range. So it's B2 to B6. Press enter, and my average number of 8 to 10 learners is 3.6. If we know we're working out lots of uh, the same type of total, so if I wanted the average for each of these columns, again a slightly easier option, if I press the right button, would be to select all of those columns, click on the average from the drop down auto sum list, and then it will give me the average for each of those columns and it has differentiated between column C where the answer is 4.2 and we can see that it's the average of C2 to C6 and then D which is the average of D2 to D6 and E which is again E2 to E6 so the program recognizes what it is that we want. One final thing to be aware of if I type in grand total, so we want the overall total, and note that I'm going to leave out a blank space in this formula, or in this calculation. If I click on auto sum, then it immediately enters that blank cell into the calculation. If I want to make sure that that cell isn't selected, again all I have to do is make sure that the cells that I want are all that are encircled. So it's again positioning the mouse cursor over that first cell and dragging it around all the other cells that we want included. Once we're happy with the calculation, press enter and it's done. And my grand total is 135. So that's making use of the auto sum, and again there are a number of ways in which you can apply it, and it's finding the easiest way to do it. In this last spreadsheet, I have lots of numbers, and again I want a total of all of these values on the page. Again, I can just click auto sum for that first row and in this instance it's row 2 and we want the cell the columns B to M and once we're happy with the uh, typed in information press enter and there's our total and now what we can do is replicate that sum and replicate just means copy or clone we can replicate that for the rest of the values so again if I go into N2 in this instance and it's the selected cell, we can tell that by the thick black border and in the formula bar we've got equals sum and the cell reference. To replicate information in Excel all I have to do is position the mouse cursor on that small black square on the bottom right hand side of the cell. I will then have a very thin black plus sign as my mouse cursor. Press and hold the left mouse button drag it down, nothing is entered into the cell until I release the left mouse button and then our totals are all inserted and it's replicated the formula but it has changed the row numbers 
for each of the corresponding rows. If we have another look at replication, so again it is merely a question of selecting the first total cell using auto sum and then going for that black box to the bottom right hand side. Do be aware there's a third cursor that the mouse can appear as and that's if you're on that thick black line. We've got the normal northwest pointing mouse cursor but underneath it we've got that four-way directional arrow and if I press and hold with that cursor and drag and drop it means that we can move the cell contents and it's not something that we necessarily want to do so but do be aware of the mouse cursor that you're using so to replicate these across all I have to do is go for that thin black plus symbol Dra drag as many rows as I want release the left mouse button and then it works out the sum for each of these columns so that's making use of the auto sum function and the average function in Excel.